All right, great. So uh, my name is David Yanagisavajot. I'm also going to cheat, uh, present the paper of mine together with, uh, which I've done together with Alessandro Gonzalez and uh, Leo Burstein at the uh, University of Chicago. Um, I'm going to talk about an experiment that we ran in Saudi Arabia um, on social norms and in particular perceptions of social norms. Before I talk about the experiment, I just want to take a step back to talk about some general concepts that sort of underline uh, this study. And uh, so let's think about a totally different, uh, so it'll be a labor market context in Saudi Arabia, but, but I wanted to think about a separate problem, uh, which is domestic violence, which is a big problem all around the world. Um, and, and, and I want us to think about norms. And this question has been asked uh, all around the world. Um, and I want you to think about it right now. Do you think this action can be justified for a man to beat his wife? Think of this on a scale from, no, it can never be justified to always justified, or you're somewhere in between. Sometimes it can be justified under certain conditions. Okay, so think about your own belief here. Right. So this question has been asked all around the world, and you see uh, the percent that says never justified varies a lot across countries. Uh, in countries like Poland, you see 80, 85 percent uh, says it's never justified. Country like South Africa, you see about 35 percent. A country like Rwanda, you see 4 percent. Um, so that's been measured all around the world. What I want us to focus on is not only this kind of aspect, which you might call uh, first order beliefs, uh, your private value, but I want you to think about a second thing, which is if you had to guess, what percent in this room do you think would have answered or thought that the answers, their answers never justified? Okay. This second concept you may call second order belief, which is what you perceive other people in your peer group or in society uh, to think on the same issue. We think this is potentially very important for understanding the, how social norms work in practice. So think, for example, about two societies, and you can think of these uh, red uh, people here, red men, if you will, as uh, answering that sometimes it can be justified uh, to beat uh, a wife. There are, you know, we would expect, arguably, that society B, where many, many more think it can be justified to have, in terms of behavior, more uh, domestic violence compared to society A. But why would we expect that? We think there are two main reasons. One is the most obvious one, which is in society B, people's intrinsic values, their first order beliefs are such that they are more inclined um, um, to engage in domestic violence. But the second mechanism, which we think is important, is that this person here, take the same person, put the same person in two different social contexts, one context where the peers, other people in society, uh, think it never can be justified, pretty much, most people, or that a lot of people think it can be justified. This same person may behave differently because of social acceptability reasons. And if you think that's true, then you think social norms matter. Okay? Now, we're pursuing a different question, which is, what if people perceive society to be different from what society actually is? So maybe reality is that most people are against it, but you perceive that actually a lot of people are in favor of domestic violence. And therefore, these people uh, may uh, engage in more domestic violence. So that's a generalizable concept that we're interested in, which is called pluralistic ignorance. It comes from social psychology. All right, so what about the experiment? We ran an experiment in Saudi Arabia. We wanted to understand labor market participation of women. Um, Saudi Arabia is a country where husbands have a lot of say in whether women uh, can uh, get a job. In particular, they, they by, by norms or by practice, they have to provide written approval to firms for the wife to work. So what we did, we ran an experiment with 500 men in Riyadh. We brought them into a room kind of like this, uh, where, where most of them actually knew each other from before. They came from the same neighborhoods. Many of them are friends. And we asked them a simple question. In my opinion, women should be allowed to work outside of home. And they did this privately, anonymously, uh, on their cell phones. Then, for half of the men in the room, in each session, we randomly provided the answer to what the other men in the room had answered. So what did we find? The first thing we find is great mis misperceptions. So men in Saudi Arabia vastly overestimate how conservative other men are. So that's result number one. Result number two is once you inform men that, look, other men are actually more progressive than you think, we see that the labor supply of their wives, so we follow these, we track these, uh, these wives, so these husbands in the experiment over the next three to four months, we see that labor supply goes up a lot. So the likelihood that the wife applied for a job or went to an interview more than doubles. Okay? And uh, we see some evidence of increased employment. So overall, I think this is uh, an example where uh, pluralistic ignorance is, we document it, 
and it can have potentially important policy implications, which is uh, what economists call norm-based interventions. Here's a potentially very cheap way of increasing labor supply uh, of women in Saudi Arabia. This can potentially be generalized to many other countries and as well generalized to other types of social norms and behaviors.